Here's a view of my uh, Arduino solar battery charger. There's the Arduino, some regulator boards, the MOSFET, the I.O. cables, and so forth. Here's another view of it. This goes with the battery, solar panel connections back here, and whatnot with indicators. What I want to discuss here is review the use of the MOSFET, which seems to be of great interest or a mystery to many visitors. Hello, a visitor to my website recently sent me an email um, asking me about this um, MOSFET transistor switching circuit. This is the schematic to my Arduino solar, solar panel charge controller circuit. It's been out a few years. And this is to answer his question, do some revisions, and explain a little more what we're doing. Basically, again, these three LEDs are indicators. They go to digital pins 10 through 12. We monitor the battery voltage here. We monitor the input voltage there. And digital pin 3 connects to Q1 when digital pin 3 goes high. This transistor, which is a P-channel MOSFET, will turn on. The advantages of using a MOSFET is when it's turned on, it has very low drain to source resistance. So you can pump a lot of current through it if you need to, more so than a bipolar transistor. This diode here really isn't, a, it's internal to the MOSFET, but I drew it out there where you could see it. Let's look at this issue a little closer and examine this circuit and charge circuits in general. This is the old schematic from the website and it's a picture that the visitor sent to me. He was curious about why I was using Zener diodes in here and we're going to be covering that as well. Alright, let's look at a typical solar panel battery charge circuit. Your solar panels of course have an internal blocking diode that's internal to the panel. We have some kind of switching circuit and then we have a battery uh, usually a lead acid cell or sealed lead acid whatever you're using that the solar panel will charge and your power is taken from the battery to operate an inverter or whatever what have you again this represents just a generic solid state switch of some time you could look at it as almost a solid state relay maybe integrated into the rest of the circuitry here is a redrawing of the original circuit you saw in the first slide Here's the internal connections to the PNP MOSFET, I mean the um, P-channel MOSFET. You notice something here, here's, here's your battery coming in, VN, this would go to your microcontroller to measure the input voltage from the solar panel, and you would do V battery, it goes back to the Arduino or whatever you're using to measure the battery voltage. The idea with charge, if you just connected the solar panel directly to the battery, it would overcharge the battery and significantly shorten its life. So what you want to do is monitor the voltage in, monitor the voltage of the battery, and switch Q4 on and off through Q2. A high will turn on the whole circuit and you will monitor the voltage on the battery. Now, this, the software, the Arduino sketch and stuff are on the website. It's, that hasn't changed, and you can find that um, link in the description. All right, let's look at what we have here. Normally, the open voltage of a solar panel is typically up to 17 volts. If I, if I put a high in for enable, I create a base emitter current through Q2, which creates a current IC through the 10K resistor 
and of course the current flows from the collector emitter in Q2. This leaves, when fully switched on, about a half a volt collect on the collector. This difference in voltage up here, it's going to be, say, 12 volts, and this is going to be practically zero volts. We'll switch on Q4, and I will get current flow through Q4 to the battery to charge it up. Note that when you're charging batteries, you want them to charge up to about 13, 13.6 13 volts, and then switch off the power. That is, you'll turn off Q4 as Arduino monitors the battery voltage, and then you'll check it once in a while, and maybe it it will turn Q4 back on to make sure the volt, the battery stays at a set voltage. But it's not running all the time. It's switched on and off. You could even pulse width modulate this if you really want it to. Two other issues to note before I leave this slide. One of the reasons that I monitor the voltage in versus the battery, if the voltage in is so low it can't charge the battery, why would you want to um, turn on Q4? The other issue is voltage gate source is 20 volts. Nearly every MOSFET I've looked up, it has a VGS of around 20 volts. That is the voltage from the gate to the source. If you exceed 20 volts, you'll destroy the device. You'll punch through the little sil silicon insulator between the gate electrode and the channel. What if we're running a VN of 24 volts? Yep. I'll do a section on uh, how to connect batteries and solar panels up for different voltages and currents. But there are 24 volt systems. Okay, I have a VN of 24 volts. I turn on Q2. I have 24 volts across Q4. Bang, I destroyed my transistor. I've got to find a way again, and I did this for H bridges and other stuff, to limit the gate source voltage. Again, let's look at the uh, construction of a MOSFET. Here is your gate. There's your insulator dielectric layer. There's your substrate. When you put an electrical charge on it, it creates a conductive channel from source to drain. Too much voltage, you punch through the dielectric insulator. The answer to that is what you saw in the not so good drawing earlier on. I put a, uh, let's say, a 12 volt zener in series with the 10K resistor. When I switch on Q5, 12 volts will be dropped across the zener, a half a volt across the transistor, and the remaining voltage, which is going to be. Uh, 13.5, 11.5 volts will be dropped across the gate source circuit. That's why the zeners were included in there like that. You could also put the zener up here across the uh, gate source, and the 12 volt zener will assure that no more than 12 volts is ever created between the gate and the source. You could have put the resistor down here. And that's pretty well all there is to it. So thanks for listening. I hope that was a little more informative on these circuits. Uh, like I said, the Arduino code and the web page for this project will be listed below. Thank you for listening. Before I leave, let me address this circuit that's on one of the two web pages related to this subject. This is a pretty good way to enable voltage checking either from the solar panel or from the battery bank. And again, I'm assuming a 12 volt battery setup. This is a 2N2907 or similar small value PNP transistor and a 2N2222 2.2K 
what you will do is connect the um, emitter of the 2907, remembering there's a half a volt drop when it's switched on, to whether you're monitoring the voltage on the solar panels or the batteries themselves. When you enable the 2N2222 with a high from an Arduino pin, the transistor up here will switch on, and then you can read the voltage through the analog to digital converter on the Arduino. Why do this? If I was just to connect this straight to the battery, it would be draining the battery constantly. There's, I mean, there's just a few milliamps here. It's not that much, but it could be a problem for small battery setups. And this is a better way, I believe, to do it. So here is this circuit. I would use it and turn it on, check the voltage from the appropriate battery. Remember, you'll lose a half a volt here. You drop 10 volts across the zener. And the reason I got the zener here like I do, remember the analog to digital converters going into an Arduino is either 3 or 5 volts. If you got a 3 volt Arduino, you might want to use, uh, yeah, that's probably okay. But this is to keep excessive voltage off the Arduino's analog to digital converter pin. Thanks. Have a great day.